Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. First off, apologies for the sound if the sound's a little bit different. Um, I broke one of my microphone, my one and only microphone, during a live stream um, the other night. So I'm just waiting for one on order. As soon as that arrives, uh, everything should uh, sound a bit better. Um, but uh, I've always been struggling with my sound anyway, you know, <laughs> on my videos. But hopefully we'll get that sorted. Right, daytime astronomy is the subject of uh, today's video. Now, it may be a bit of a surprise to you, especially if you've just started this hobby, that there's a lot of astronomy you can actually do during the daytime. Now, before I go any further, I just want to talk about the dangers of actually using your telescope during the daytime. Now, you may have, if you've bought a new telescope, may have uh, be familiar with one of these stickers that's, uh, or these tags that they come supplied with, usually around the eyepiece. Now, if I, were the, if I was a telescope manufacturer, I would have these literally stickered all over your telescope, so it would be an absolute nightmare for you to peel them off, just to drill this warning in. Um, you may think that's a little bit over the top, but trust me, even today, some people think it's going to be safe to have a quick glance at the sun without, the, uh, without the, your telescope having any form of protection, which we will talk about in a minute. Um, I was only on a, a chat the other day and somebody actually said in the chat, is it okay to do just that, look at the sun without, you know, just with the telescope. Now, it was in a very popular YouTuber, the chat was flying and I panicked. I needed to get back to that person, you know, and try and, and hopefully save their eyesight. Anyway, I did manage to get to him and said, please, whatever you do, never ever point your telescope anywhere near the sun. Well, anyway, guys, uh, it really is important. There's no second chances with your eyes. It really isn't. I mean, if you've seen the, the, the uh, effect a magnifying glass does, uh, you know, you can burn objects with a magnifying glass. Exactly the same thing is going to happen to the back of your retina in your eye if you look directly to the sun unprotected with a, um, through a telescope. So please, guys, be extra careful with these hints and tips and tricks I'm going to talk about today. So we've already mentioned it, so let's talk about the sun. Now you may have seen videos and photographs or whatever of um, people taking photographs of their sun or observing the sun with their telescopes. So if you're not supposed to do it, how can you do it? Well there's two methods that I would like to talk about, uh, the only, purely because I feel that there are only two safe methods out there. Um, apart from if we start going into uh, really expensive uh, solar cameras. But just something that the um, average hobbyist can do is one that's called solar projection and the other one is simple solar filters. Now solar projection, I have covered this before on my channel but I'll briefly cover it now, it's just using your telescope um, to collect the sunlight that comes in through the telescope. You usually put like a little cardboard shield on the front of the telescope. That casts a shadow giving you a nice shaded um, environment at the back. This then projects through the eyepiece an image of the sun onto and you hold a piece of paper behind the eyepiece and bringing it in and out will vary the size of the uh, sun on the uh, image of the paper. Now this is a really really safe method, method of uh, actually observing the sun uh, but and it's also a really good method it's a little bit old-fashioned now reason being is that most telescopes including uh, ref ref big telescopes like well not big like but medium-sized telescopes like this they are reflecting telescopes should I say like this even though this uh, tube is steel the focuser is actually plastic um, and this is really important when it comes to solar projection Every part of your telescope and eyepieces needs to be made out of some kind of metal or steel. Uh, that's the telescope tube, the telescope focuser, uh, the eyepiece uh, mounting, uh, housing should I say, and the actual eyepiece itself. All needs to be metal and glass. Um, if not, you're going to have that same effect that we've talked about, about magnifying glasses. You're going to burn a hole either in the side of your telescope or in uh, you're just going to ruin your eyepieces. Now, the other method is filters. Now, the ones that you can buy on the market at the minute are what's called solar filters and they're made out of a special mylar film. 
Uh, and what they do is they just simply fit over like a dust cover over the end of your telescope. Now you can use these with reflectors or refractors, uh, it doesn't matter. And then you would just use the telescope as normal. Uh, you would just look through it and, and it would filter all light. And it doesn't matter if, it's, uh, if your telescope is plastic because you are filtering out any of the harmful heat and uh, um, you know, uh, light that's coming through there. So you'll be fine looking through them. Again, you have to be cautious with these things though. Uh, because they just fit on like a dust cap, uh, like a dust cover, you may have come across sometimes, you know, loose dust covers, they, they can fall off. Same thing with these things, if they're not uh, correctly fastened down, they work on a similar system to like a finder soap, you know, like uh, with the three screws uh, and the clamp on. But uh, don't be tempted just to let it, you know, rest on with gravity. It only takes one gust of wind and that thing's on the floor. They're only lightweight. And then, you, again, your eyes are exposed to sunlight. Well, we've covered the sun, so let's cover the moon. Now, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever why you can't observe the moon during the day. And another thing that surprises a lot of beginners is just how often the moon is out during the day. Have a nip outside now if you're watching this during the daytime and just see if you can see the moon. It's surprising just how many times it is actually up there in, uh, in daytime. And this is especially great for if you've just bought your new telescope and you're dying to use it and you can't wait for it to go dark. Well, get it out there and start observing the moon. Now, obviously you're not going to get your best views in the daytime. Um, you're, you're not going to get quite the contrast as you will at night time, but like I say, nothing stopping you from pointing your telescope towards the moon in the daytime. How about the planets? Is it possible to view the planets in the daytime? Well, yes, especially Venus. Now, Venus is like the third brightest star, or sorry, brightest thing or celestial object in our skies. So there's no surprise that you can actually see it in the daytime. Now, you may have heard that Venus is best viewed just before dawn or just uh, after sunset. Uh, now, this is true, but that's like kind of cheating. We're still in twilight hours. What I'm talking is about is you can actually see uh, Venus in broad daylight in the middle of the afternoon. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, admittedly. And the way to make this easy, uh, a lot easier, is to use uh, something like Stellarium, which is a star chart, like a, uh, a planetarium, should I say, which just shows you positions of the stars and the planets throughout the night and the day. Um, another good key is, is if the moon, which we've talked about, is visible and it's close by Venus, then you've got a good guide where to go and how much distance to go from the moon to have a look at Venus. Now, if you're, a, if you're a young human being, then you've got good eyesight, no doubt, and that's what you're going to need for this. Younger people are going to see Venus more than us old fogies during the daytime. Um, I didn't think this was possible when somebody once pointed it out years ago at our observatory. It was around about 7 o'clock British summer time, and he went, oh, there's Venus. And I'm like, what? And sure enough, there was an, an 8 inch uh, Dobsonian telescope. He turned it round, aimed it round, so I looked through there, and sure enough, there was Venus. So, Venus is certainly something you can view in the daytime. And in fact, Venus is best viewed during daylight hours. Uh, with it being its orbit so close to the sun, it's always really low down, and so viewing's not very good. And to be honest, there's not much detail to see on Venus anyway. It's a pretty bland planet to look at. But what is interesting is you will see the phases of Venus just like you can the moon. So Venus, good eyesight, good conditions. Have a look for it the next time you're out on a nice sunny day. Now, sticking with the planets, and this will surprise even seasoned astronomers. And one planet you can see during daylight hours is Jupiter. Now, believe it or not, Jupiter is visible in the daytime. Obviously, it's not going to be at its best, but you can see it. And you can also see it if you've got exceptionally good eyesight and the conditions are right with the unaided eye. Uh, again, star charts, star atlases, Stellarium is a good uh, starting point of finding out exactly where the planet is during the daytime. Now, 
v Jupiter is best seen with the naked eye when it's at least 90 degrees away from the Sun. Now, uh, if you don't know how to do degrees or measurements um, in the sky, you can simply measure with your hands. There's a system where you use your fingers. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, I've done a video all about that and it's really useful learning that. Uh, for instance, if you do that, you hold your pinky and your thumb up from that distance to there, that distance to there, that's 25 degrees. So it may not look a lot on land as, as you're looking at it like this, but uh, if you're near a window now, hold up your hand through the window and just see how much sky 25 degrees covers. It's quite a lot. So 90 degrees is quite a distance away from the sun. But remember, you are going to need really good eyesight. Uh, the conditions have got to be nice, still and calm to see it with the naked eye. But if you find out uh, where it is through a star chart, point your telescope in that direction and you may have a good chance of actually seeing Jupiter in the daytime. Finally, the International Space Station. Now, the ISS is incredibly bright during the nighttime, so there's no surprise that we can actually see it in the daytime. Now, this is where apps are really going to help you out again. And uh, just do a quick sh uh, search on either app store uh, for ISS Tracker. And there's a plethora of them, and I'm sure you'll find one that's going to suit your needs. So, like I say, the ISS is one final target that you can go and track down during daylight hours. Now, please remember to be always aware of where the sun is, especially, say, if you're going to be looking for the ISS during the daytime. Make sure by using apps such as Stellarium where you can fast forward time and you can rewind time on Stellarium so you can know exactly the tracking of the sun and also the tracking of the ISS. You don't want to be tracking the ISS and go straight across the sunlight. Remember the sun is going to be blinding and I do mean blinding. Um, when it's also low to the horizon, when it, you know, like at sunset or sunrise, when it doesn't look like it's got much power in, the sun is still incredibly dangerous to view with optical aid. But just be just to, uh, be aware of that. You know, use your common sense, guys, and you can have a lot of fun doing astronomy in the daytime. Well, there you go, folks. That's another video all wrapped up. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. If you've liked the video, video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to press the notifications. Make sure all notifications are turned on because my uploads are all over the place. You don't want to miss them. I've also started to do lives now. Uh, thank you to all those who joined in the lives uh, I've done the last couple of days and especially those that actually did the super chats more than generous especially the way things are uh, in the world today so thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, those kind contributions there so yeah look out for the lives hopefully i'm doing one this friday as the um, the time of this video has been released so keep an eye out for that one until then folks take good care of yourselves and i will see you on the next one bye for now